Hi there, welcome to Motorsports Wiring Harness Part 1, planning your harness. Uh, so planning is an immensely important part of Motorsports Wiring Harness construction, uh, and it probably takes the longest out of anything. Um, because you're concentrically twisting things, or at least twisting them in general, uh, you really need to have it planned out what's gonna go in what layer, how the branches are gonna work, even before you you know, start assembling your main ECU connectors and pinning things like that. So uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, I fully acknowledge that it's not the best or the fastest way to do it. Um, it's probably the cheapest though, <laughs> if you're just starting out. Uh, I basically just use pen and paper and a measuring tape. Uh, I know there's a lot of software out there that you can get into some really high-end stuff. Um, but that's not what I use currently. Uh, I also realize that my technique is, you know, probably flawed in some ways, or I don't have quite everything together as far as splits go and that kind of thing. So, uh, but we'll get into that in the next video. Um, so I'm not going to get into the actual physical concentric twisting today. I'm going to save that for part two, but uh, hopefully this is enlightening to you guys. I'm going to try and condense it into you know like as informative as possible without showing you like me physically writing out everything um it, de it definitely takes a lot of time so be prepared if you're gonna do this there's a serious time investment to make so let's begin also it's definitely better if you have the car there physically um to take all your measurements off of and to route everything that you want to route exactly how you want to route it. Um, I have not been fortunate enough to have something here in the harnesses that I've built. Um, so I have to go off OEM or modified OEM harnesses. Um, so there's definitely going to be some things that aren't like ideal in the way that the harness is routed or that it's constructed. Um, so yeah, if you can get the car there and you can use you know, a rope or string or just even just extra wire to route everything you wanna route exactly how you want it, that's definitely the best way to do it. Um, like I said, I am not doing that today. So you guys will see that there's some compromises there, but let's do it. Okay. So, what we have here is a harness that the customer sent me. Um, it's all labeled, which is nice. Uh, it is a kind of factory harness spliced with a link lead harness. Um, so there's a lot of splices in it down here. Um, let's see, this ECU connectors are here. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a mess, um, but it worked for what he needed it to do. Uh, but obviously ours is gonna look a lot cleaner. But, so uh, I have this table vise here, comes in super handy, I think they're like 22 bucks or something. Uh, so what I am going to do with this is, I am going to put one of these ECU connectors in the vise. And I'm going to measure from the ECU connector to each and every connector in the harness. So <clears throat> that allows me to just list everything out. I just use a good old fashioned pen and paper. And as you can see, I just have the component, the length of the, from the ECU connector to the connector, and then the number of conductors in the connector. So, what that allows me to do is just list everything out, get a total number of conductors, which is important to know for when we go to concentrically twist the harness. There's there's a certain number of connect or like conductors that are required in each layer, and you kind of have to pick one that functions that works for you. You can use a core of one wire, two twisted wires. Uh, three twisted wires or four twisted wires. Um, and I'm gonna link a picture in the description 
of a chart that shows you exactly how the, the um, layers work, where it'll have the number of layers, the core, and then the number of wires per layer. Uh, I think with this harness, I'm going to try to either use the core as the starter wire, um, which you can see is pretty heavy gauge here, but I'm gonna replace it possibly with uh, a multi-conductor uh, twisted wire, or I'm going to use the shielded uh, two conductor wires for the injectors as the core. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I have to I have to plan this all out still, so we shall see. But I'm going to get this laid out where it needs to be, and then I'll show you guys how I've organized that and kind of my process of trial and error on which uh, components go where and then we will get after it so so as you can see here i have my vice set up which i clamped that connector in and i have to measure all the way out to this longest harness here stretching this as far as i can 300 centimeters you can see it's hard to see because my camera won't focus but there is some extra even from that so i'm going to go 305 centimeters so what we have here is how i organize each connector so i add up the connector the concentric twist uh, layers and i fill in each component as they fit in each layer of the um, concentrically twisted harness. So in this, um, I have all the 18 gauge powers, so ignition, and then there's triggers. I have the, the, um, the injectors, the starter solenoid, um, the ECU grounds, and the VVT solenoids. Those are all going to go through this connector. And then you can see I've been doing some, some trial and error as far as um, the second connector goes. But here I have um, one with a core of four wires uh, that's going to work out in the end with three fillers and then a standalone knock run. Uh, uh, this was the first one I came up with. And then I uh, came up with another one actually, which is a single filler at the core and then everything is stacked up um it's a little more ambitious because it includes the knock sensor run in the uh third layer uh i think uh, i'm gonna go with this one i think it'll be cleaner and more compact uh so i'm gonna try that out but it's a lot of trial and error at this point guys as you can see all my scribbles and cross out marks i'm just trying to fit the right number of components in each layer of the concentric harness so that they add up to the right um, number here. And you'll see that these numbers, if you refer back to that chart that I posted, are reflective of different, you know, this one's a core of four, and then these are the layers that go up. This one's a core of one, and then these are the layers that go up. You'll see that on the chart there if you look at that. So... Once we have this down, then we can move on to actually starting to measure the wire and cut and kind of start construction of the harness. And that about wraps it up for the planning section of the harness. There's a few other things for us to do. Uh, there's power and ground distribution that I kind of need to explain, but I think I'm actually going to do that last. I know I said uh, I was going to explain it next, but... It kind of makes sense to do it last with the way you construct these harnesses, at least the way that I'm constructing this harness without the car here. With the car here, again, it'd be different. It's just a little different technique where you can run the powers and grounds from where they go in general, whereas this, I have to run them kind of afterwards. Uh, it kind of varies on what, what you're tackling. Uh, but yeah, there's some interesting obstacles coming up for the concentric twisting part of this harness. Uh, 
just with the dual firewall plugs and having two ECU connectors, it gets kind of crazy in there. So that'll be interesting. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to cover all of the concentric twisting stuff. So you'll get to see me build the whole harness. I'm hopefully going to do kind of like a little time lapse section too, but uh, stay tuned for that. I hope you found this information helpful and insightful and I'll see you next time. And one last thing, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, make sure to stick them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them or, or even include them in a future video. You know, if I can explain something more hands-on that I might've missed. I know there's a lot that goes into this stuff guys. And you know, it took me a long time to do it. And so I understand people having questions and I will do my best to, to answer those for you guys. So let me know.